all the recent updates with the Mercedes GLC facelift and a performance ride with the AMG 63S from the GLC. That is today in Autogefühl with Thomas in Full HD, full screen and full X. Let's go! The GLC facelift in general features new daytime running like signatures right there and also technology wise they upgraded it, LED is now standard as for the headlamps, optional the ones you can see here, the multi beam LED also with more high beam function. Also some visual changes here but just minor, here the GLC 63 and 63S, a little bit of horsepower difference, gets a stronger lower bumper right there, also a contrast and this Panamericana front grille with a different shape and those vertical fins to make it more aggressive in the look. 4 meters 65, 15 foot 3 or 183 inches is the length of the Mercedes GLC SUV. This one here in mountain grey Magna, one of my favorite colors at Mercedes, has this matte paint. You can also hear how you feel it, <laughs> very interesting. And together also with the Kevin Side Blue, the so-called Thomas Blue and Mercedes. The wheels to start with 17 inch with a normal GLC, go up to 19, then the AMG line would be 19 or 20 inch. And here we got the optional 21 inch wheels together with the GLC 63. And they're really cool as for the styling, aren't they? You still got those plastic fenders here at the wheel arches, and I think that's also totally fine because an SUV should still have this crossover look or what do you think? You know there are also other concepts where they paint it in the uh, vehicle color as well. The V8 by turbo sign right there, zoom more to the engines and this SUV design is let's say rather conservative. You remember the GLK that was a little bit more boxy so to say before the predecessor. This one here has a little bit more styling and if you want the styling to be even sportier then you could also go for the GLC Coupe. Jonas also filmed one of those earlier, which is already in the facelift variant. And that one's also very interesting here in the silver styling. Has, of course, a little sportier touch. Then also with this wing at the rear, looks dif different, definitely. Also here in the 63 version. And if you want to see how a normal GLC Coupe would look like in <laughs> the Thomas Blue color, this one here, a GLC 300. That one looks a little bit more civilized then. So, also some color variations for you. And let me go into the suspension topic a little bit more because for a normal GLC you can already get an adaptive suspension and then here the AMG models, they get the optional air suspension which you rather go for optional when you have the normal GLC but that one already included here. But then with a very stiff AMG setup we're going to talk more about that when we go into details very soon. In the rear, the GLC facelift introduces this new tail lamp shape, also with the signature right there when it's illuminated or when you're on the brakes. And this is more in line, for example, with the new design also of the Mercedes GLE, the bigger brother. So I think this, you know, is a quite nice update you have there. Then for the 63 models, you can see the lower end here, more massive, like an own attachment, also with those exhaust tips. The air does run through that, but the outer part, this is just a separate element, the real exhaust end is behind that. It's then not four exhaust, but two exhaust tips. Yeah, about this fake exhaust uh, topic, discussed it quite a lot recently. So what do you think? Do you like this additional attachment here for the strong performance model? 
I'm not really sure if it really fits to the vehicle form overall. It definitely changes the whole form because then in the top part it's all slim and it gets wider the more you go downwards. See those copper fellows here behind the wheel? Those are the brake calipers for the carbon ceramic brake. Here the ceramic brake disc, really massive, bigger and you can also see this ceramic structure inside. It's an option, but then they only come for the front brake. And well, usually you need those here for the racetrack or something, or when you're racing like that. <laughs> yeah, so for the racetrack, the ceramic brakes make sense because they do not have this so called fading effect, so they always have the same brake performance. For normal road driving, you really have to hammer them at some point, otherwise, they will build up some kind of layer on, the, uh, on those when they're not properly used. Some people go for those because they can tell their friends, oh, I have the ceramic brakes. And also the wheels, they stay cleaner because they don't create this typical brake dust. Hmm, but now there's the catch. Here at Mercedes with the C-Class or with the uh, GLC, you only get those in the front and the rear stay with the normal brake disc. And then the front wheel will always be clean, whereas the rear wheels will be just the same, <laughs> having the same dust layer from the normal brakes. So it doesn't make too much sense, I think. But they do look fancy, but just in the front here. So, what do we have here? Yeah, a little slow hydraulic struts, but there are some. This one here. Oh, Alexander handcrafted this one here. This is the true AMG engine philosophy. One man, one engine. This one here, the 4-liter V8 bi-turbo with 476 or in the S version, 510 horsepower, as we have today here. Acceleration depending on 63 or 63S. 4 seconds or 3.8 to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. Of course, that's a lot of performance. All-wheel drive standard. That's a true one. More rear-wheel bias than a permanent all-wheel drive. Of course, the distribution changes a little bit, can adapt a little bit more to the front, a little bit more to the rear, depending on the situation. And... In general, there are also different engines available for the GLC family. We get four cylinders, six cylinders, and eight cylinders, both petrol and diesel. The smaller petrol four cylinder will now also get the mild hybrid system, and there will also be a true plug in hybrid version and a fuel cell version too. So, a really wide variety of engine choices. Which one will be the future? Only time will tell at the moment. Today, here, all about the performance engine. Okay. starting with the car key, with the AMG logo, also at the back. Pretty slim and light, like that. You can also use your smartphone when it has NFC capabilities here. That's why they have the sticker right there. Door closing sound. Mm, I've heard it in a more solid way, somewhat okay. Then you get some nice little red cover right here at the inside of the doors, everything pulled tightly, clean design aluminum style inserts right there optional Burmese sound system and a nice sound not as elaborate as in the e-class models but still already quite decent then some space also got the inside door pockets this will also be decent then AMG entry caps right there and AMG floor mats here for the 63 model those AMG models also come with a special Dynamica micro rubber steering wheel. I love that. It's a great grip, summer and winter time both, and with or without gloves. Really a true racing style. The whole steering wheel has a new design right there, also with a flat bottom. And the Distronic now went up to the steering wheel itself, has not a separate column anymore. That's interesting. 
and also this performance gauge left and right I really don't like them they just look and feel a little bit cheap don't you know fit to the rest of the interior I think yes it's quite practical to choose the driving modes right there that is somewhat a good feature while driving but I think the left side could have been left out I think this special scenery also has a 12 o'clock mark here on the top also racing inspired then you can also get an article dashboard here with a leather red it's also a nice design also has a nice soft touch and a nice look and you can already see those new digital instruments soon more to this infotainment system upgrade because you still start with analog gauges with a normal glc optional then those full digital gauges but here with the 63 model those digital gauges are included then 12.3 inch for a normal GLC you have different seating choices, for example also in Germany a fabric seat but also a leather red seat, the article MB Techs in the US and they also get some of those in Germany. So really a wide variety of choices. Then optional sports seat which is standard for the AMG models and the normal sports seat would be with a little bit less bolstering here but still somewhat sporty. And with Dynamica microfiber on the inside and Articore MBTEX leather red on the outside. The same way this bucket seat or the optional sport seat is also available. It starts also then with microfiber inside and leather red on the outside. And this one then so is the optional sport seat form and the optional animal skin surface. And both is really not necessary, ex adds extra cost. And the normal sport seat is more comfortable. And also the seating surface will keep you cooler in summer than if you stick with the microfiber. Let's now get inside and since this one is still a mid-side SUV, the entry is somewhat easy. Just those very stiff side bolsters of the sport seats, the optional sport seats, hinder that a little bit. Yeah, I mean you feel a little bit caged in and again they are very slim from the bolstering as well. Size-wise, you know, I'm 1 meter 86 or 6 foot 1, you know that if you're subscribed, and that leaves a lot of headroom still. You can also get the panoramic roof optional, then there will be a little bit less headroom, but that one will still work for tall people. The steering wheel can be adjusted here with this electric column. That's really cool. Um, overall, I think it's a little bit overloaded with all of the controls now. The Distronic control here is actually quite good to have it because it reduces a column here. But then again, hmm, not sure if it's maybe too much. What do you think? You can also take a soon another perspective at the steering wheel when you're here in the rear perspective behind me. And in general, the seat can be controlled right here also at the inside of the doors. It's really not good for reviewing, <laughs> but easy to understand and what is doing what when you sit inside the vehicle here, of course. The GLC interior is defined by the sporty upper dashboard and then this huge middle console which here with the AMG comes then with a carbon fiber look. That's cool because then you also do not have this shiny black surface which tends to look a little bit cheap or scratchy or fingerprinty <laughs> after a while. And those round vents right here and the new logic for the infotainment system is for normal GLC base analog instruments with some digital screen, optional those 12.3 inch full digital instruments, standard for the AMG model. And on the right side you would start with a 7 inch screen and then the second one that you can see here 10.25 inch. However both small and bigger screen have the new MBUX system. That means you now have also a touch screen and also the voice support that you can, you know, for example, change your temperature with the voice input or um, like a GPS input. Redundant controls for the infotainment system. For example, here the right thumb then can control the right screen and the left thumb then with this one can control everything in this area. And then of course the right screen would also be touch screen, so different controls available. Volume here on the right, then you can activate the voice control right here with pushing up or then with the Hey Mercedes command. And on the left side, you have the Distronic, the cruise control to set the speed. Distronic cruise control also with a new update. So it works a little bit better, includes more features and so on. On the left lower part, especially for the AMG models, you can set to the manual mode, manual shifting mode or the DSC off, for example. Um, so this is then possible. You can also change what you want to see there. When you press this small screen yourself, for example, by changing 
the suspension setting. A little bit overload to do that while driving, I think. This one here on the right side is functionality-wise okay with me. We already know that from Porsche, Comfort Mode, Sport Mode, Sport Mode Plus, Race Mode even a possible, not really recommended for road use then. So this comes a little bit better as when you would switch it in the lower area of the middle console. This is easier to do it while driving. And you can also press the screen to go to this individual mode for your individual settings. But again, quality-wise, they do not resonate the rest of the interior. Functionality-wise, I think here, snow mode to keep it a little bit low from the throttle input. Um, yeah, but I think, you know, this is quite okay. Maybe leave it with this one, but leave that one out. What's your take on that? And now to the infotainment system right here, the newest one with the MBUX. As I showed you earlier, there is touch available. Then you can control it with the right thumb at the steering wheel or also with a lower touchpad, so redundant controls, and you know, why not? So overall, the overview is also better than in previous versions. You also have the 63 um, performance gauges, for example, you can show when the engine is turned on. Let me turn it on, and then you can, for example, see um, like inclination of the wheels or so on, engine here, performance, torque figures, and so on. Whoa, torque. <laughs> yeah, pretty fancy. But in general, you know, the system is pretty cool because you can use this voice input also for the GPS. Here, this is the map. Zoom in and out, also faster than before. GPS input via voice is quite interesting. You can change the temperature via voice. Or also things like, you know, there's at the moment a strong scent here because this car has this perfume option. So we can, for example, either use the steering wheel button or say, hey Mercedes. Switch off the perfume. I'm switching off the air freshener. That's really cool because I'm not sure how could I find it in the menu somewhere. So and things you cannot find in the menu quite easily. You can just put in with a voice input and hope that the cars understand it. So in this case it works. You still have a separate climate unit here so you can Switch the temperature also like this while driving. That's of course easy. And I also like to have a GPS hotkey because sometimes you yourself or maybe the coder is doing something in the infotainment screen. Then you want to switch back to the GPS view. And then you can always do that in a you know faster way. Then the AMG badge right there. Cup holes are hidden below. Also adaptive. There's an inductive charging pad available. And then there's a new USB-C plug for the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto connection. Alternative to that would be Bluetooth connection then. They don't have it wirelessly available for the smartphone connection yet. Just, of course, Bluetooth connection is wireless. Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you need the cable right there. In the middle con console, there will be more charging possibilities. Then this lower trackpad, you have the driving mode selector here. So also redundant controls here or at the steering wheel. In this trackpad, then you can also like go left and right and so on. And I can also use it for zooming, for example. There's also a separate exhaust button if you want to, for example, keep it in comfort mode but still want to have an exhaust sound, that's possible. And also a button for the rear view camera or this you know, um, parking aid function. So this is then this automatic parking function you can use when you, you know, not park the car yourself. And first here this split opening right there this is very interesting always with mercedes and then you have two more usb-c chargers right there and there and talking about this parking aid function that's how it looks like then you would start driving when you have activated it slowly and then the car tells you actually when it detected a parking spot and then does it autonomously so pretty interesting and there's also the menu for different views here to the front and to the side here that you don't damage your rims. Precious ones, 21 inch here. To the rear and also different angle with the drone view from above. So pretty crisp also as for the resolution. And by the way, there will also be a new trailer maneuvering assist that is newly available also with the GLC facelift. Head up display, you can always hardly see it on camera, but in reality, you can see it very well. It's a good addition, for example, for the speed, the loud speed, and also some GPS directions when you have set a route. And the digital instruments right here with a fancy look, 
those ones are the AMG gauges, but you can also switch it to you know, normal trip information, for example. Yeah, this was the performance driving now, later on also some autobahn driving with the minimum consumption, but you can see this V8 by turbo is really, really that's not MPG, that's liters in one kilometers. That's pretty fierce, definitely. Also, the um, assistance systems info could also be in there, for example, the distance from this tronic and so on. So you're pretty flexible with that, fancy system, head-up display function here, for example, or switch the whole design, oh, super sports it's called, or to the normal sports view that would be looking like this, or like here, the more subtle classic view, but when you have the AMG, probably you want to leave it with that. What about the rear compartment? By the way, here for the 63S model, you also get a rear differential lock stand equipment, Optional then for the normal 63. But here to the interior effects, well, those super sport seats, they are a little bit slimmer, therefore, you know, they're maybe not too bad for the legroom. Makes maybe a little bit of a difference. The thing is, here in the GLC, hmm, yeah, I mean, they do not use the space that well. You still can sit here as a tall adult if a tall adult is driving, but not the best package overall. So, yes, it works for four adults but not plentiful, so to say. Headroom here, especially when the panoramic roof is not in, is also totally okay. Again, 1 minus 86 or 6 root 1. And, well, the seating itself is actually quite comfortable and it's also somewhat upright here in the rear. You cannot move the bench here whatsoever, so not much option as for that. But, as I said, it's actually quite okay to sit in here. So, it could be better, but it also could be worse. There's a big all-wheel drive tunnel, so in the middle part, it's not too stiff to sit here then with the stiff sport seats that's a problem then for the knees so in the middle part this would be rather just for emergency situations cannot really recommend it and then that isofix here the outside seats each so you can install those child seats then we have some space underneath right here together with foldable cup holders they're quite funny and you can also get this rear climate unit, change to the temperature and the vent strength right there. Well, in the very lower part, two more USB-C, so they are all the way now with the facelift for the USB-C charging port, so maximum of five in total. That should be enough for everyone and a 12 volt power supply. And now to the trunk, you open it right here below the logo. Hmm, this Magno grey paint, I just love it. <laughs> then, it's very interesting, you can also close this lower floor cover and have some more space underneath. Well, in general, good dimensions actually to use and the SUV also just has a, you know, just little cut off right here. So with the Coupe, we have more problems that we need to push the luggage more inward that the hatch still closes. So we have a height problem here in the Coupe that's the drawback then of the different design. This is a cover here with the rail on the left and the right side, though that's very clean then, like that solution. On the left side, then you also have this additional cubby hole where you can put various things and then they are <laughs> stored away. Since this one here is an air suspension, you can also use this button here and then the whole car goes a little bit lower that you can load things in easier is a little notch just you can hardly see it and dimensions right here this is a length of about 90 centimeters and a width of more than a meter a little bit more than a meter so that's actually quite good and let me also put in the backpack that you can see how that one plays out and again here in the SUV I just have to put in it like this in the coupe I would need to put the backpack like this that the hatch Stood, should um, could seal close. And you can also flip the seats from here, like this, left and right. Easy fold system. Here we go. And then we have the maximum setup. So that's also a very nice function that goes that easily. When we then measure the absolute length up to my driving seating position, that then <laughs> would be just over 1 meters 70. So, mid-size SUV, not too much legroom, but very well usable trunk-wise.
Well, I'm not the biggest fan of those Nürburgring Nordschleife track records because everyone tries to set some in their individual segment. You know, remember like the Skoda uh, Kodiak RS as a seven-seater SUV record lap time and really getting very tiny segments to score a record lap. Mercedes, however, has scored a 7 minute 49 lap time here with the GLC 63S. And that's really quite decent for an SUV. So just to mention this lap time record for you. You can really also compare it to other sports cars which are not SUV. So really a fast one. Welcome to this active driving part. Let's put in some Sport or Sport Plus mode. It's dry road. Usually just don't use the Sport Plus on the road, but I can <laughs> do it now. So at least when it's dry and let's go. Starting with some corners here. Some bumps in the road and whoa, there you feel this. This suspension, especially in the Sport Plus mode, is even more stiffened up. So that's a very, very stiff setup. So that you directly feel it's a different car than a normal GLC. Rather feels like a low sitting sports car indeed. And here, the steering is also, you know, on the one hand, it does feel sporty. But then here, like the low angle areas, that feels a little bit loose. So I would like to have some more feeling in that. Let's see if that's the difference between the comfort mode and the sport mode. If it's, yeah, here it's a little bit softer in the comfort mode. Let's go sport plus mode again. Yeah, I think there's a little bit more, yeah, I wouldn't say it's more feedback, but it's a little bit, you know, you need some more strength. Here, so in this comfort mode, it's very loose. Sport and then a little bit more resistance, but I wouldn't really say it feels natural. But the good thing is that you don't have to steer that much. See it also here in this yellow marking. Nice accelerating out of the corners. Then you can use the shifting pedals here to go back. Nice V8 sound. Plop also from the exhaust when you boost up here with the right shifting pedal. So a lot of fun here. And you actually forget that you're driving an SUV. This does not really feel like an SUV because you know, a little bit lower, stiffer from suspension. Also this sporty cockpit you have around then together with the sound and so on. And you see there's no body roll whatsoever. You can see here, I'm doing some slalom right there. Car does not lean majorly to one of the side. Let's go up further into the forest. If you like to compare it, by the way, to a competitor, on the very same road, recently drove the Audi SQ5 right here on the very same road. So you can also compare it a little bit. Sound-wise, it's a big difference, I can tell you. <laughs> you know why. So and then you can go back once more gear, especially when you're going uphill, then you hear more even more from that sound. If you want to have the automatic shifting again, hold the right shifting pedal. Then you can also just let the car do everything. In the comfort mode, by the way, the shifting is, you know, calmer, shifts up earlier and so on. And if we go into those sports or even race mode, then it goes all the way down the gear. So have your more spontaneous acceleration. But even more spontaneous always when you use the shifting pedals and well, do you hear it like this? Click. So it's a very loud click and pretty stiff setup here also from those pedals. That you directly have a very small feeling. Very beautiful roads here also. Up to the oh, is that an SQ5 as well? No, not really. Just had a dark front grill, therefore <laughs> you might have mistaken it for that. So next corner. And the whole car gives good feeling then when you are in the corners, especially. So it's a lot of fun in cornering. 
the sport seats here, I mean, they give some feedback right there and they're also stiffer, but uh, the longer you drive them, the more back pain you get from those actually. So again, stick with the base sport seats, they will do a better job. You always enough distance to the cyclists. I really appreciate that also when I'm on the bike. And the next nice corner here on the right. Yeah, I think the steering should deliver a little bit more natural feeling, I think. But still, you know, it's it's sporty setup here, so can't complain too much about that. And overall, it's a super sporty ride. Again, main thing is that you do not feel anymore that you're driving an SUV. It rather, feels like a like you know like a mid-sized sports sedan or something. So in here we can also stop to get an acceleration from the get-go. Will give you more some more sound. Not exactly the um, precise acceleration, of course, because uh, as we have uphill, but it's still you know fun just to try it around. And there is also an, uh, a launch control available, like here. That was already 90. <laughs> Jonas was, was surprised by that, like that. Bam! I, I lost my headphones. Oh, he lost his headphones even, wow. Yeah, yeah. We, we rarely had that in a V. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of sports vehicles, and we rarely had that. That it was like so spontaneous, um, like bam, almost like with an electric vehicle. I, I only lost it in the 911 before. Oh, race driver. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, in the 911. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but truly, we, you can have a lot of fun with that one here. You now down here with a more open area, a little more racy. Yeah. So everything trimmed to true performance here with the 63, but you know, we didn't expect any other thing. Oh, and by the way, all-wheel drive, that was also an interesting aspect. As for the all-wheel drive here, yeah, of course, of course that's standard and you have a rear-wheel bias. That's very important. This one is still a rear-wheel driven platform right there. So um, not to forget that. And since you have this all-wheel drive, you can also get this power to the ground. If that one here would not have the all-wheel drive, it would actually be way slower in the acceleration. And by that, using both axles, you can get all that power to the ground. And that's, of course, really helpful. And also good for slippery conditions. So you might think about, you know, rain or something, having so much power. And I really cannot recommend to go in any of those sports mode because you will just have too much power, even with the all-wheel drive. Yeah, such a beautiful road to test here. I hope you enjoy together with us this performance driving. I would suggest we just turn around and go this very same road uphill once again. Because when going uphill, then you have more boost from the exhaust. Here we get a good feeling. You don't have any feeling of understeering or something when in those corners. So here we can turn around. I have some more fun for you. Off the way. There we go. Well, now I want to shift myself. So let's do that here. That was a gear to low, right? <laughs> oh, overtake a maneuver. Let's see if it's safe. What does it? Oh, got some flowers in the truck. <laughs> you know, if I once uh, one day have a flower shop, I will call it flowers and shit. <laughs> what reference? Tell me in the comments. So now, can we have a go? Ah, it's too unsafe with those corners here. Uh, come on, next corner. Uh, let's wait a little bit. Then we can have some more acceleration for that. Whew. Hit that growling. Boom, 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 boom. this trip you together with us.
So well, before we get to a calm motorway experience, let's start with a loud motorway experience. <laughs> so we set it to the Sport Plus mode and already a gear is shifted back and we can hammer it out from 90 kilometers to whatever. That's 200 kilometers or 125 miles an hour. That's crazy, right? I mean, in an SUV. So yeah, supposed to be the or one of the fastest SUV on the road. And everyone is gone behind us, wow. And this is like, like, like the first kick. I mean, we were already at about 100 kilometers or 60 miles already. And still there was like, bam, a kick, wow. That's, that's insane, really. That's really insane. Of course, even more fun when you initiate that with the shifting pedals yourself, for example. So then you can go back in gear and have more spontaneous acceleration from the get-go. Well, so many gears to shift through. Here, for example, in third gear, then you... <laughs> it's also when I look over to Jonas, always when I hit the throttle, and uh, uh. <laughs> it's just so, so much g-force you you can't deny you know you can't do anything against it <laughs> well i mean we have a lot of performance cars but i mean it's also the reason it's still a heavy suv and especially with this v8 and then of course a lot of g-force apply when you have so much power and this is, wow, it's a really abundance of power you have right here. And also, you know, the brakes, mm, I could be a little bit, a little bit fiercer, I would say. So you need a little bit of power for, for those. I think they could react a little bit more spontaneously, I have to say. However, you already get bigger brakes for that. So if you really hammer them, you also have a bigger, better braking performance also needed for the additional weight you have here with this vehicle. Oh, tunnel. <laughs> Especially the guys behind us will probably say, hey, hey, hey do it again. <laughs> yeah. So the sound is actually now one of the biggest differences with this vehicle. Also, if you compare it then to a 43 version, especially when you are inside a tunnel. But, wow, this performance really... Phew. Yeah, well, when can you use it? This was one of the very rare situations, and then it's really very extreme, that acceleration. Especially, I mean, not only from, from zero, but really when you already have picked up speed and it still goes forward. Let's do some autobahn driving here with the GLC 63S. And the funny thing is always, well, especially here in this top AMG spec, it does not really feel like a true GLC. It rather feels like a lower sports car because of the stiff suspension. And again, that shows how stiff you can tune an air suspension setting. So you don't feel at all anymore that it's an air suspension. As long as the road is all flat and good, you still have enough comfort, but even in this comfort setting, you definitely feel this rougher suspension and so all those bumps and so on are not even out that well then. Well, and for the motorway, the good thing is you always have some power reserves, even if you're just driving in a comfort mode. You can always use the shifting pedals. They're really giving a super crisp feedback right there. And well, this sign right there usually means unlimited speed and we'll Hopefully get soon to that. But then of course there are those additional electronic signs you also have to pay attention to. Line spot monitor, you've sh shortly seen that is the red triangle then in the side mirror. It's a very helpful feature. They also updated all of the assistance systems here with the facelift, especially the Distronic and the autonomous emergency brake uh, received an update that works very well and it's really recommended to get one of those assistance systems packages which also include then the blind spot monitor 
Also as for the adaptive cruise control, which is now here at the steering wheel since the facelift. Just set the speed and then can relax a little bit. Really keeps this uh, distance to the cars in front of you. There again, the, the blind spot monitor appearing in the red triangle right there. And it also has this active steering that it keeps you in the lane. I mean, even though there's an RS6, we could definitely race this one with the power we have here. <laughs> Would be no problem. So all those semi-autonomous functions are also available here for the sports model. And you might want to use them just when commuting on the motorway and so on. Then when you get to the countryside, then maybe let it fly again a little bit more again. So this is also something um, I wouldn't really say this is a good compromise between sportiness and comfort because that would be maybe GLC 400 or 43. This one is definitely the sports GLC. So you will lose comfort also in the motorway. Also on long term with those seats. Better say with base sport seats, they give you a little bit more bolstering, a little bit more room to move around and so on. This will be very helpful too. At the moment, this is in the sporty setup you can get, but also the most uncomfortable setup that is possible. Noise insulation wise, <coughs> this by the way here, the, this was the semi-autonomous lane change, so I did not really do that with the steering wheel. It was just done here with the turning indicator. So that also works with this vehicle. If that's really very useful is another question <laughs> because you can basically just do the lane change yourself. Mm, you know, but then again, this is all leading towards the autonomous drive. And also here, and, you know, it does keep me in the lane. Of course, the system is not meant to let you take your hands off the steering wheel. You should keep it on, but you can basically relax them a little bit more. Overview, by the way, is quite decent. There's also an advantage of the SUV. So the SUV has a better overview than the Coupe, of course. And by the way, here the semi-autonomous lane change. Again, do not take your hands off the steering wheel, at least regulations-wise. That's not intended at the moment. I'm just showcasing it here for you. So especially the SUV has a very good view to the rear. I can really see what's going on there. And of course, more practicability for the trunk overall. And the side windows are also pretty upright. Just this area, you know, this is pretty thick, but still view is not too bad. Mm, yeah, I mean, for the B-pillar then, again, the blind spot monitor is, is an option you should definitely go for. Other than that, the GLC in general is a great motorway vehicle. Would just be better if the suspension again would not be so stiff here. Uh, we are already in the comfort mode. You can also pick the sport mode right here. At the moment in the ninth and top gear. So this is then just for you know, saving some fuel. And then you can also score the minimum consumption if you leave it in the higher gear and also in comfort mode. At the moment you also do not hear so much of the engine. So you can also drive it quite silently. Although when you're for example in a parking garage and start slowly or something, then you still hear a difference if you're driving the V8 or one of the, one of the smaller engines of the GLC. So let's also then see what minimum consumption we could score when we just have the cruise control activated and let it browse just a little bit, maybe with a little bit of acceleration here and there. Because that's also interesting when you know when we earlier went up that hill in a very sporty way of course consumption goes to the maximum rather and then we go on the motorway instead to cruise control and you can see you know rather what, what minimum consumption you could score. Usually an average from that is somewhat accurate than to have you know a good result overall. So here in around the Frankfurt area a lot of motorways go together. Sometimes you can drive fast when there's not so many cars on the road and when the restrictions are off. A lot of times still the speed restrictions apply. And you know the roads here are also quite good at the moment. 
So that's also then fine as for suspension, but again, you know, as soon as we have some uneven parts in the road, you do feel that. So if you primarily drive it in the motorway, I rather advise you not to pick the 63 or 63S, but to go for, you know, maybe the air suspension, yes, but then the non-AMG trim. We also experienced that with the GLC 43 in the pre-facelift model, that even in the 43, the air suspension had a very, very stiff setup. And if you like the very sporty driving, you know, that has an advantage. But then again, I ask myself, why an air suspension then? So if you want an air suspension, you rather want to have a soft ride and so on, but then stiffen it up again that you don't feel it's an air suspension. To me, that doesn't make too much sense. So, and just the cruise control, Average here is at the moment, <laughs> yeah, about 12 liters and more kilometers. Yeah, that's of course already quite a lot from this V8. Um, in this case, you will also score some lower consumption figures than with the smaller engines, because this one here definitely also adds a lot of extra weight to the whole vehicle. We'll also keep you updated when we later on did some, you know, more extensive driving and longer longer runs, how the consumption will unfold, also without the performance driving included, because it's also definitely a factor always when driving this vehicle. Other than that, it also gives you very good stability here on higher speeds. So the steering wheel also has a you know, fine tune, it's just uh, because of those assistance systems, when they are all activated, you know, there's a some, somewhat a play in the very low degree areas here. Um, I liked it in the um, so far, you know, version of the E-Class that you on the left side could deactivate all the stuff pretty easily. But those buttons are removed more and more, of course, to make it less buttons. But also because the regulations tell the manufacturers that they have to include the assistance systems always, that they are basically always on from start. And then you have to go to the menu to deactivate some of those, you know, that's the thing. Other than that, as for driving modes, we can also switch it right here, as I told you earlier, with this knob here, Porsche-like, at the steering wheel, and also, for example, the, the other settings, driving settings, you can also pick your know, sport handling mode here on the left side, but I think that's still a little bit complicated, I'm not sure if I'm really happy with those with the, all those additional gauges we have here on the steering wheel. GPS, by the way, you know, we have those, you know, with the basic overviews, and then there are you know, those signs when we approach the next intersection. And then there's also optional, the augmented reality function, which sometimes work well already, and in some other tests, you know, some intersections were missing. So I, I guess it depends but I think it's definitely an interesting feature. I'm not sure yet if I would pay the extra money for that already. So, while look here at the augmented reality function, there you can see it. Shows me where to turn, actually, also then with the name of the street, for example. And this is a really helpful feature. So, we had some situations in Norway where it wasn't really mapped all the way. But in the US, we had a very good experience with it. Most of the roads were actually recognized. How does it do it? There's the front view camera right there. And in the image of the front view camera, then those signs or arrows are being displayed. And then you know better what's going on. So as a zoom factor and of course then with the signs together, pretty nice. But it's still an option even for the biggest infotainment system. Switch one more motorway. Motorway switches are always a lot of fun with this vehicle. And again, you know, like a very slight crawl just from the V8 when you're not really forcing the issue and keep it rather calm. Now we can also just stay in the comfort mode. There's no body roll whatsoever. Such a you know feeling of stability and calmness, confidence, really flawless. Also good feeling that in the steering wheel. 
So that's as for our calm experience on the motorway. And the short consumption info, when you want to have the minimum consumption, cruise control and basically let it roll, 10 liters on 100 kilometers, that's about 23 mpg US or 28 mpg UK. Usually when you hammer it a little bit more, it will go up, as I said earlier, about 12 liters then, and then less mpg of course, or then way, way up, as we've shown you earlier, when you really want to let out the performance. Yes, the V8 Biturbo does consume a lot of fuel. And the other ones, especially the new alternatives like the you know, PHEV, maybe the F-Cell, they have a lot of different alternatives now, which are also more eco-friendly. And now to our conclusion for today with the Mercedes GLC facelift in general, and also here with the AMG GLC 63S. Well, the facelift is mainly about the changes on the interior, those new infotainment systems you can get. Of course, the top trim will also, you know, cost a lot of money then too. But at least it's good to have this new MBUX system, especially with the better voice recognition that will add definitely more extra to this car. So it is a good option definitely to go for because you can just have less input with all of the systems and the and the knob and so on some do prefer the turning and pressing knob whatsoever then you should still go for the pre-facelift just some minor visual changes on the exterior some more extra equipment than as for the lights the driving is just the same as before interesting is that of course here with the performance version you have really a very very aggressive suv it does not feel that much as an SUV anymore then because of the very, very stiff suspension setup. So you really have to like that. So you would go for that one if you want a little bit more upright seating position, but still want, so to say, I mean, it's a sports car. Definitely performance wise, you've seen also in our driving part. As for a comfortable ride, air suspension wise, then it does not make sense to go for the AMG models because you lose the typical air suspension comfort with this. And of course, it is basically overpowered, you can say, and of course, way too expensive if you compare it to a normal GLC. Yeah, so this one here, if price is really you know, not mattering too much to you, a good performance tip would also be to stick with the normal sport seats. This will give you more comfortable riding in general. Those optional sports, it's always very interesting just from the visual part, but not really from the riding part. I hope you really enjoyed our review here together with us. The GLC in general remains a very, very good pick here in the mid-size segment. Please also join our other reviews of the competitors. For example, a BMW X3 would be one from those mid-size SUV segments. Also one I can also recommend, so tune into that review. And of course, recently we've shown you the Audi SQ5. You can also tune into that. So, and now, thank you again for watching. Please tune in next time.